Hello my soccer universe, the final that I didn't necessarily want to see is happening, but I think it's the deserved result. It was in both cases not really close, to be honest, if we look at it in the end. And this kind of a theme for this Champions League group stage, there were hardly any competitive ties in there. Although mouth-watering they may have been, we have not seen any overtime. And I would argue the only ones that were kind of tight was Inter's win over Porto, where Inter ground at a, a nil-nil in Porto. And then the other one, or maybe Milan's win over Spurs, but I never felt that being in danger. And then the other one was, of course, Milan against Napoli. That was uh, probably the most competitive, the most uh, grabbing tie in the entire Champions League group stage so far. And the way that the final is set up, I think this might has everything like a foreground conclusion written all over it as well. So it might be a blessing in disguise for uh, Milan that you did make it to the final and get embarrassed there. However, I don't want to talk about the final too much yet. Big, uh, we'll talk at the end of this video, but I want to focus on these two matches. Um, let's get into it. Inter got another win over Milan. This is now, if you count the Supercoppa, the fourth derby that Milan played against Inter without scoring. A horrible record. Um, and this was probably the closest contested of these four, where Milan just had to come. They had their chances, um, especially the one where Brahim Diaz, um, you gotta bury that. Honestly, the very first half, Rafa Leao had the one run, otherwise he was a non-factor in the game, but he had the one run where he could have made the goal. However, I think going with the left foot and going to the outside, from that angle, outside post, was not going to happen. I think if we would have put it on the near post, like the winning goal then came, there was a bigger chance of this uh, going in. But... Overall, I thought that Inter had that very well under control. I mean, Milan had to try, Milan had to come out. Uh, there was not much coming from it. Um, uh, also, we need to definitely say uh, the big highlight of both derbies were, of course, the choreographias, the TIFOs all over the stadium. This is what this makes this tie special. And contrast that with the choreographed by the club flag waving display that the city fans made there's no comparison about that this is the ultras together maybe with the with the club a little bit planned this out to make it a spectacle not that the club gives everyone the fans and he 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 this looks a little bit more like a chinese communistic party convention what happened at the etihad whereas it's a real blood and sweat fandom that happened in both Milan der uh, Derby. So I definitely want to point that, that out. This was for me the grand display of that Derby. As I said, the match didn't live up too much. Milan was definitely too weak. And to be honest, um, we talked about squad depth before. You don't have a Benazer. Uh, the lineup, I had no idea how Milan is going to boss that game. It needed a superhuman Tonali. Yes, uh, he tried his best, but uh, you cannot make up and uh, Kronic is not made for this stage. And Milan just don't match up well with Inter. That's as well as Milan, I think, matches up with Napoli that don't match up well with Inter. That's, I think, the long and short of the whole, whole thing. Um, Inter created a few half chances where were mostly shots uh, above goal, but, you know, they didn't need to. And uh, I think the only really contagious, because I think both of the big chances that I have uh, said now for Milan, the Brahim Diaz and the Lea one, I could have been called back as well, because for the build-up in the, for the Brahim Diaz chance, um, there is the Hernandez touching Barella, potentially a foul. So that is one thing. And then the other one is that uh, Leao, when he goes on, on the run, I think the ball falls on his hand. So this could have come back as well. So even that didn't work out uh, all that well. Um, I think the most contentious part though was that the Acerbi stomp on Tonali early in the second half, that should have been a red card. I think he didn't even get a yellow. And I think this, this was a scandalous decision. Would I... Would I have said that this would have swung the tie? No. 
it would not have swung the tie in Milan's favor. However, uh, this was glaring. And it kind of amplifies the antipathy um, of myself against Ocerbi, who, uh, fun enough, I think came to through the Milan youth ranks as far as, as I know. But I don't know. I, I never really uh, liked that guy all that much. And I'm getting so tired of him so demonstratively praying in front of a game. Uh, it, it just makes me nauseous. To be honest, so yeah, uh, that was that. Um, I think with I had the slim hope there was 75 minutes to go. If Milan scored a goal, this could give them the lift, and this Milan uh, and, and this Inter team is is older and might actually break in. But no, it's exactly the opposite that came. Uh, it is Lukaku and Gosen had come, 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 come on. Lautaro comes to the left, uh, plays the ball to Lukaku and Gosen, completely misplaced. Together, I have all the Milan defense are just looking at those uh, two two guys, forgetting about Lat 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 and Lukaku just puts it uh, there, and then he puts it in the near corner. Yes, uh, Mike Mignot didn't look good, although he made a really good save. Uh, he made a really good save before that. Um, so yeah, it's one nil, and it probably could have been two as well if Inter is a little bit more clinical, uh, which is fortunately their only real weakness in this tie i think they should have made more goals yes if i look back on it and you know i watched it i didn't have high hopes i knew that milan is not gonna advance because i couldn't see milan scoring uh two let alone three goals against inter as i said the only hope i had that one way or another you get a goal in then inter gets nervous uh with the crowd uh loads of expectations on them maybe this could swing and then you snatch a lucky one uh i also have to look back at the chance of mosias in the first leg if you convert that after having survived the onslaught of the first half you go into this game needing only a goal which would make it a little bit more, more uh, easy and more palatable. And then Brahim Diaz, uh, even if the goal is cut back, but I am looking at this Brahim Diaz chance. This was the one chance where Inter's defense looked unsorted because they were suddenly, yes, they were all going for the foul and, and so on. But this was the one chance. Tonali made the run, made the great cutback. There were suddenly three Milan players there. Brahim Diaz in the best pole, pole position and he gets a, a rather weak shot off. Those are the two chances that, they, that I'm looking at. These were the chances to sneak uh, in an uh, undeserved victory, which I would have, of course, reveled in. But I don't want to be uh, <laughs> a sourpuss or whatever. Congratulations, Inter. I think you deserved it. Um, given at the moment, if there was an Italian team, Inter is at the moment the best Italian team. And let's face it, uh, they are outsiders in the final. Which gets us to the other game. Uh, much was expected from this one because the first leg was so uh, riveting and evenly balanced. However, um, in the build-up to that game uh, on Austrian TV, the, uh, we have this guy Marco Stankovic, former player. He actually saw something very interesting. In the first, 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 first game that uh, it was always Alaba and Rüdiger doubling Haaland. Basically two-on-one man coverage and that left ample of spaces that Manchester City's attacker did not attack. Like New York really she's and, and so on. They did not go into the spaces. They were rather static in the attack. Now, this is my conjecture. In this game, all the empty spaces got attacked by Manchester City. Whenever there was a goal or uh, a gaping hole, there was a City player moving in, causing all kinds of trouble for Real Madrid. And Real Madrid definitely played off the park. The midfield for Real Madrid did not really work. They were overran, they didn't know what to do, and they looked leggy. In every sense there. So it was not a... It was that... It was... Manchester City did everything that they did not do in the first leg, in, in a way. And I'm wondering... Was this part of the overarching match plan of Guardiola? To give a little bit of fake security to Real Madrid knowing my team is so superior. Because let's face it, this team is superior. I was actually afraid that Manchester City is going to kill off the tie in the first leg already. Uh, but Real Madrid, you know, they, they have skilled players. They can play themselves out of situations. But this time they could not. Because Manchester City did the extra mile, they did the extra running, they were booed by the crowd. Uh, it was a defensive display of Ramadi Verdi where they were just hanging on. 
Uh, one may question why Ada Militao played instead of uh, Rüdiger when Rüdiger and Alaba did such a great job on Haaland and on defending. But again, um, not sure if that's the overall. I honestly think, I mean, I heard that you should have played Rüdiger and Ada Militao and maybe Alaba on the uh, left. I honestly think that meanwhile Al Alaba is such a valuable central defender, kind of the captain of the ship, uh, that you cannot leave him out. And then it's basically, do you go back to what you had was working before? I really don't think it would have worked better. And Holland didn't score. He had a personal duel with Courtois. Uh, that, that, that was of the highest degree. And for me, the best player for Real Madrid easily, and probably the only one that was on world-class level on this evening, was Courtois. And he ended up conceding four goals. It could have been way more. Uh, he had... And early say, I mean, f first he pushed Haaland wide in a, a very early on. Then he got his uh, leg onto it so that Alaba can clear on the line after Haaland header. Then this brilliant telescopic arm save where Haaland, who is not a great header, but he had the perfect header. It was against um, the uh, the run, nicely poised run, run, run goal and going. Uh, he gets his arm out and saves that one. And then even uh, in the second half, when it was already, I think it was already 2-0, uh, um, Haaland in front of him, and again, he gets the leg and puts it on, 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 on to the crossbar. So Haaland himself could have scored at least a hat-trick if it wasn't for Courtois, who was outstanding in this fixture. That, uh, uh, that we don't have to doubt. However, the rest, as I said, the midfield was not running. And if you have with Benzema and Vinny Jr., two players that don't really defend, you have no way to stopping this uh, Manchester City midfield. And you were overrun. I, it, it really showed the legginess. Uh, or, or, or that Kroos and Modric are up there in age. Maybe, maybe you put a Kamavinga centrally and maybe then really play an Alaba or whatever left, that could have worked. Um, I found Real Madrid helpless and it took them a while to actually concede, but it was then uh, the Bruyne saw the open space that Silva attacked 1-0. And this was actually a chance created in the build-up by, Sil by Silva. Um, and then another another one where Gundogan gets through, his shot gets blocked by the Real Madrid defense. It Lampons high, and Bernardo Silva with just such a nicely cushioned header over Alaba into the net, 2-0, and it was really hard to see them coming back. However, there was one way that you could see, see them coming back, and this was just before that goal. When Real Madrid, City had the one, one lead, they took a little bit the foot off of the guy, suddenly Real Madrid felt like for the first time that they went into the opposing half, and Tony Kroos out of, out of nowhere lashes a shot onto the crossbar. And then it was 2-0. And it probably should have been 3, if not more. Uh, this was that much. This It was very much re reminiscent to what Inter did to Milan in the first half. Second half, Real Madrid tried to come, come, come back. I actually thought Angelotti looked really helpless, uh, showing in his substitutions or lack there, there. I think he should have maybe changed something to try to get something going. And then the first exchange I was is getting Modric off and Rüdiger on. I actually think if you thought you need to go defensively better, I would have made this change much, 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 much sooner. Um, as I said, then there was another free keeper Alaba that uh, Ederson saved. Okay. However, then the big chance by Holland, then a free kick from De Bruyne that Akanji gets his head on it, Adam Militao deflects into his own net. It counts as an Akanji goal, to me it's an own goal. I don't, for me it's an own goal. The way Adam Militao, there's no way the Courtois can save that. Uh, and then even uh, you take off uh, Holland for Alvarez and uh, he makes it 4 0. That was a destruction of Real Madrid, I think. I have to go deep to get where the performance and the result match up in such a decisive manner. And the only two I can think of, and maybe this is yeah, again uh, look, looking back at glorious, Milan's destruction of Barcelona in the 94 final and Milan's destruction of Real Madrid in the run up to the 89 title, which I didn't see live, but I've seen many, many highlights where it was a similar story. You first had the Bernabeu where you were 1 1. 
And it's also similar in the sense that while Milan had at that point already won two year European Cup, this was kind of new Berlusconi Milan, also loads of money for that time pool to put in. It's a pittance to what Manchester City is gonna put in, uh, has put in there. But again, uh, the second leg kind of ushering in the, the era of the great Milan um, on the, of Arrigo Saki with a 5 0 destruction. This was a 4 0 destruction. Uh, it was comprehensive. And last thing on uh, Real Madrid. I think that Florentino Perez did not like that one. And this was probably reason, reason enough to let Ancelotti go, even if there's not an obvious replacement there. On the other side, again, congratulations, Manchester City. I think this was Guardiola's masterclass. And if he really did the overarching plan to not to be a little bit more static in the first leg and then go all over Real Madrid, I would give, me, give him even more credit. This is Sepp Herberger like, honestly, if he would have done that. But this is not my conjecture. I'm not saying uh, that this was the overarching plan, but. I have many misgivings in Manchester City. Many. I think this financial doping, they should have been punished, they should have been out, uh, thrown out, the ban should have stood up. All these things. And uh, for that, I am not happy that Manchester City made it to the final. However, if I take that aside and I just look what Guardiola could build here, the way that this team is playing, and again, the, the one thing that you have to say maybe against Guardiola is that he is such a maniac that he actually wants to play the players exactly how he wants to have them play. There is not much individual uh, brilliance. Maybe at the Bruyne gets a little bit, but then you saw his fight with Guardiola. There is not much leeway that you get from, from a Guardiola team. But when he builds it, and he builds it well, he built it re really well. This is a city team that's undeniable. And you can see it in the entire run to this uh, Champions League Samson semi-final. If you look at the um, uh, uh, re results, the only one that was not a blowout on aggregate were the two games against Dortmund in the group stage. Everything else, there was at least a three goal difference. This is the most dominant side so that has made it at least to the final in a long, 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 long time. So yeah, uh, very quick preview to the final. It, the final will get its own preview vi vi video. Once you get there, it will be played on the 10th of June in Istanbul at the Atatürk Olympic Stadium. Uh, I honestly think both will play in the home jer uh, jerseys, although I potentially could see Inter playing in yellow. But I think it makes total sense. Manchester City play their home shirts and uh, Inter play in their home kit with black pants. Of course, sponsorless, which is maybe the one, one, one thing I haven't commented too much in my Serie A re review videos uh, before that. Um, before we go into chances, I also want to underline that um, I said that Inter was not only now the best form uh, Italian team. I also think the way that they survived this really, really tough group. Yes. The knockout stage was maybe a little bit the luck of the, of the draw, but they still made a Benfica team that I rated much higher. And they maybe had the luck to hit this Benfica team at their one rough spot of the season so, so far. But this Benfica team is a really, really good, good, good one. So this is maybe the scalp that uh, Inter probably in the Northern Series really can put on themselves. Porto, yeah, da, da, and Milan, yeah, was unfortunately at this stage of the season no, not an opponent. I would rather have seen that one played a little bit, you know, before the World Cup when Milan was still at full strength and looking good. But the way that they survived the group stage, yes, they lost to Bayern, but they beat the Barcelona team, they were Spanish champions. So that gives some credit to this Inter team, and I think they are deservedly there. However, having said all that, uh, my model gives them only a 37% chance of winning, which is the lowest that I've seen as uh, for a long time. Um, and I think the book is heavily more lopsided. It is Manchester City uh, dominant favorites. Um, I can, I have a hard time seeing Inter winning it. I think the only way is to frustrate City and that maybe Guardiola is overthinking it too much. But I think this is literally a game where he just has to put out a solid match plan. Uh, maybe 
Let's see what Ten Hag does against Manchester City in the FA Cup final, which is a week before that. However, um, this old guys against this my attacking might of Manchester City, it's really hard to see Inter winning that one. The only way we see it, that they hold out, that they are defensively super sound, they defend with eight, nine men, make spaces tight, uh, keep it all together, and then snatch the winner with a counter-attack in the most inter traditional inter way possible. That's the only way I can see it. But both teams, has to be said, were cruising, cruising to Istanbul. And with that, let me know your thoughts on the Champions League semifinals and the final. Give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.